The southern United States is a sportsman's paradise, home to trophy fish, fowl, deer, and bear. But there's something else here. People are seeing a monster of epic proportions. Mega-sized hogs said to be half a ton, with razor-sharp tusks and nearly impenetrable hides, terrorizing local farmers and hunters. With an exploding population, these omnivorous and aggressive giants are being reported across the country. He really didn't even look like a pig. He looked like some kind of monster. When he threw up his head, hooked my boot, he jerked back, and my feet were off the ground. I had no idea they were the size of this one. You hear him growling at you and, and uh, grunting and, you know, coming at you full blast. His tusk came this way, and it just flapped his skin up, pan, everything. I'd never in my life seen anything this big. Most eyewitnesses describe the monster as similar in proportion to their normal-sized brethren, but up to four times bigger. Weights can exceed a half a ton. The most dangerous part of the hog is their mouth and tusks. Up to six inches long and razor sharp, these tusks have been said to rip through flesh like a knife. The history of giant hogs dates back millions of years. Archaeotherium, a member of the extinct Entelodon family, is a genus of a giant pig that roamed the forests of North America some 20 to 30 million years ago, standing as tall as six feet at the shoulder and armed with powerful jaws and teeth. Entelodonts resembled modern-day pigs and had very few foes. Some of the Entelodonts got as big as, as modern-day rhinos, just massive animals. Jack Mayer is a wildlife ecologist with Savannah River National Laboratory and has been studying hogs for the last 35 years. There were giant hogs, the entelodonts, sort of cousins to the true pigs. Uh, that was a, a parallel evolutionary line that, has, that, that went extinct. There are no longer any entelodonts around. But could living relics of these prehistoric monsters be responsible for the recent escalation in encounters in the southern United States? In 2004, a monster-sized hog was shot near Alapaha, Georgia. Dubbed Hogzilla by the national media, it was estimated to be over 12 feet long and weigh 1,000 pounds. In another incident that same year near Leesburg, Florida, an estimated 1,100-pound hog was shot and killed by an Orlando fireman. The story quickly spread over the Internet with the usual blending of fact and fiction. And in early 2007, just outside Anniston, Alabama, this mega hog was shot and killed by an 11-year-old boy. The weight was an unconfirmed 1,051 pounds. And the mega hog sightings continue. In Fayetteville, Georgia, William Kersey encountered another beast. My wife and son was running errands. They seen the hog when they drove by. They pulled up just because they was amazed at the size of him. And a gentleman approached them, asking them if they knew anybody that would, would shoot this hog. Kersey's son volunteered him for the job. I mentioned to him that I was going to get a 22. And he said, no, nah, Dad, this thing is way too big for a 22. So I grabbed my deer rifle and I loaded it with four bullets. That's all it would hold. So I wasn't sure what I was getting into until I got around there. Of course, I had to get my crutch. I had a broken leg got up to the where the hog was at as quickly as possible and when I got at the truck when I seen the hog I got out on my side which is the side the hog was on I didn't know whether he may come after me or whether he would run and I wasn't in no position to be running so I had to make a decision real quick I shot the hog before anybody even knew I was gonna shoot This picture, taken by Kersey's neighbor, shows a creature of unnatural proportions. Its head so large that it spills out of the bucket of a front loader. I knew it was a hog, it was obvious, but I'd never in my life seen anything this big. The Kersey hog was officially weighed in at a transfer station at 1,100 pounds, but experts are skeptical of these mega hog stories and suggest that the big hogs are no more than pen-fed pigs that have been raised to massive size and then escaped. You have to remember, a wild pig or a wild hog uh, has a pretty tough life. There's a lot of food out there, but it's not high quality food. And they're having to constantly work to find what kind of nourishment they can to get by. But typically, it's, it's not enough that's going to allow them to achieve any large size, any large body size. 
Domestic pigs, on the other hand, they actually do achieve those sizes quite commonly in, in captivity. The largest pen fed hog on record lived in 1933. Big Bill weighed 2,552 pounds, the same as a full-grown black rhino. Raised to display their massive size, pen-fed giants like Big Bill tend to be docile while captive. While it's possible some may have escaped or been released into the wild, these man-made beasts pose less of a threat than a true wild megahog. Mayor will examine the skull of the Kersey hog to determine its origin, a farm pen or the wild rolling hills of central Georgia. For Monster Quest, it's a distinction that's critical. This is one that was shot by Bill Kersey in Fayette County, Georgia. This is an animal that, based on its anatomy, looks just like a domestic pig. Very large skull, a dished dorsal profile, and a very wide skull. If you look at the incisors down here in the front, they're very separated. In most wild pigs, pigs that are born in the wild and grow to physical maturity in the wild, those lower incisors are absolutely up against each other like that. When you get an animal that's born in a pen, that's raised on a very high plane of nutrition, you get this separation of those incisors. Looking at the physical characteristics of this animal, they are 100% consistent with an animal that was born in a pen and raised to physical maturity in a pen. But then how do you explain the beast in this picture, with its sharp tusks and a body dwarfing its hunters? Is this a true monster? In 2002 near Plaska, Texas, about 300 miles northwest of Dallas, Oren Don Malloy claims he killed this megahog, a monster he contends was over 700 pounds. Furthermore, he asserts it wasn't pen-raised. It was wild. When we stepped to the edge of the brush line, he was there literally just a few yards. He looked up and snapped his tusk a couple times, and here he came. I mean, instantly. He closed the distance, you know, just in a split second. The first couple of rounds in, he didn't face it. He just kept coming. Matter of fact, it may have sped him up a little bit. We were actually on the trail where he came out, and he was coming back down that trail just, just to get back in the brush. And there wasn't anything going to stop him. Uh, I put number three, number four, and number five in as he was coming. And uh, it didn't slow him down much at all. Just a few feet before he got to us, he turned just a little bit. And I put number six in him, and he just folded up right there. We were just kind of stunned at how fast that all took place. And then at the size of him, I mean, he looked like a young horse. And just uh, being, well, stupid, for the back, lack of a better term, I just threw one leg over him and sat down on him like a horse. And uh, when I did that, he let out this deep, guttural grunt and jumped up and took off with me on his back. <laughs> and I rolled off to the right, and Toby put number seven in on the left. And that's it. Texas is said to have the largest wild hog population in the United States. With recent evidence of resident giant hogs, it is here that two Monster Quest teams will launch their search. The first team is led by Kevin Ryer and Tim Hicks. Together they have nearly 40 years of hog hunting experience. They will focus their search an hour east of Dallas near Quinlan, Texas, an area well known for its huge hogs. Shot a few that I just couldn't get them weighed. Nothing, none of the scales around here would would weigh them. They were, you know, it was it would top the scale. They will use scent lures, trail cameras, and live traps in their attempt to capture a monster hog. My goal right now is big hog, um, 400 pounds, 500 pounds, and hey, if a thousand pounder comes up, he's mine. 200 miles northwest of the first team near Archer City, Texas. Expert wildlife trackers Mark Peterson and Bill Ramberg will lead the second expedition. A higher density of hogs in Texas than there is anywhere in the country. Whenever you have volume of animals, you have better odds of large animals. Texas is a new experience for me. Uh, the, the train is, is, is beautiful, and so I think it's going to be really, really exciting. Their mission, 
capture a hog, rig it with a video system, and set it free to capture footage of something much larger. We're going to take a small, high-tech camera, and we are going to try to put it on a live hog and turn it loose in the wild. For the first time, a wild boar will be equipped with an onboard video system. I'll tell you what, it's going to be some of the most exciting footage you've ever seen. It's going to be phenomenal to watch where a hog goes in this thick stuff that we can hardly get through. If the expedition is successful, the hog with the attached video system will rejoin the larger herd in the impenetrable underbrush and capture proof of wild mega hogs on video. First, they will need to find a large herd of hogs actively feeding, where they will set up a baited live trap to capture a hog large enough to carry the video system. But wild hogs are wary animals, fearful of humans. So Mark Peterson has brought along the perfect four-legged disguise. A two-legged animal, like us, can't get very close to wildlife. Uh, horses can't, uh, especially hogs, things like that. They're used to seeing livestock, being cattle and horses. So horses are a huge part when you're trying to make your way through the wilderness in search of wildlife. Peterson and Ramberg team up with Pat Canan, a game warden who has worked for the Texas Department of Parks and Wildlife for 17 years. Hogs are non-game animals in Texas, so essentially anybody can hunt them at any time. And since we kind of monitor all the hunting in the state of Texas, we're involved with hogs almost on a daily basis. Canan directs the team to some wheat fields where hogs routinely feed. What we'll do is y'all come on your horses, go straight towards that brush line, and then go around that south side of it where those deer are. Just as Canaan predicted, as the team rounds the brush line, they come upon a herd of hogs. That wind changed just a little bit, and that hog on the far right got a whiff of us, and as you can see, they're taking off across that wheat field. They're not running real hard. I think they'll probably stop after a couple hundred yards. As Peterson and Ramberg get closer, one of the animals gets spooked. We were trying to see how close we could get to them. We got within 75, 80 yards. Uh, then the hogs spooked. They wanted to get back to their shelter. They believe they have found a herd large enough to have several candidates to carry their video system, ready to reveal whatever might be lurking in the dense underbrush. We'll do them about every foot on the way up here. The pig will need to be about 250 pounds, strong enough to carry the video system. They will install Reconyx trail cameras to determine the best place to deploy the live trap to capture the Trojan hog. With the flip of a switch, the motion detectors are activated and the camera will document any activity within the viewfinder's range. With the cameras in place, Peterson and Ramberg head back to camp. Navigating the Texas terrain proves to be more difficult than they anticipated. Mark Peterson and his team are near Archer City, Texas in search of mega hogs that have allegedly reached gigantic proportions. But in Texas, it's not just the wildlife they have to look out for. The terrain can be equally dangerous. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. He's almost up. If he gets up this time, he'll be all right. Yeah. Just throw the gun on the side. Don't worry about the gun. I'm surprised he's not on his feet. Something wrong with your leg, buddy? 
Yep, 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 yep. The horse escapes the incident unscathed. It was just one misstep, and luckily the horse is okay. I think his front leg got down into a little bit of a hole. He got nervous, he pulled out, he stumbled, lost his balance, and now he was stuck in between some rocks. With the camera traps in place, the team decides to call it a day and give the horses a much needed rest. The inhospitable terrain of Texas can take its toll on man and horse, but hogs have adapted and flourished here since Hernando de Soto brought them to the New World in 1539. Legend has it that during the Texas Revolution in the 1830s, the Texans released their livestock and the domestic pigs went wild. Pigs being pigs, they go wilder quicker than any other domestic species that we have. And once pigs go wild, once domestic pigs go wild, they become known as feral hogs, wild pigs that are solely of domestic ancestry. Could descendants of these wild hogs have grown to monstrous sizes? Hog hunters Kevin Ryer and Tim Hicks are embarking on a search to find out. Kevin Ryer runs one of the biggest hog hunting operations in Texas. If anyone can find a monster hog, it's Ryer. My goal right now is big hogs. As a hunting guide, Tim Hicks has an impressive track record for finding hogs in the area they have targeted for their search. I was averaging between 300, 400, 500, you know, in a year uh, for the last few years. The team has gotten a jump start on the expedition. They've had their cameras deployed for six weeks. While they have not yet photographed any giant hogs, the images from those cameras confirm they are in the right place to find wild hogs. This trip the goal is to capture a mega hog alive. They begin their expedition by setting up and baiting traps. You can use uh, all different styles of traps. You can use scent products, you can use corn, you can use mixtures of stuff. You know, you find a trail, you bark that trail, you corn that trail to your trap. You try to get your traps in the area that you know that them hogs are going to come. We're going to set up bait, which in the form of automated feeders, uh, we're going to put scents around those feeders. In addition to the live traps, they'll use trail cameras to monitor hog activity in the area. The trail cameras will more or less tell me when a hog is coming, what time of day or night we expect to get him. Along with the trail cameras, Raya will also use a potent scent that attracts wild hogs. It's a pleasant smell. It's very easy to use. You just simply coat the bark of the tree with this oil and this will help keep the hogs in this area for a longer period of time. That is your target. If you're after monster boar, you want a sow in heat to come here and spend as much time as she can spend because that's what the big boar follow. They're so smart, it just sometimes it uh, seems like uh, it's like, oh, I'm never going to get this booger. and. Uh, then, you know, all of a sudden you look at it and you got a gate, it skates down and boom, there stands up a big one, you know, and those big ones are fun. But then the work begins. They get pretty mean when they get in that, in the trap. While 1,000 pound hogs are dangerous, even a small hog can be ferocious. Tim Hicks will never forget his run-in with an angry hog back in 1998. I went out fishing one Saturday morning and came back. <laughs> Decided, well, I better go run the trap, and uh, only had one, and so I drove down to it, and it had about six little babies outside the trap. So I, uh, I thought, man, I don't want to let those babies die. Well, I eased up to the trap, and of course she started slamming into that trap trying to get me. And I thought, you know what? I'll just open up this gate and let her out, and uh, lean my gun over onto a tree. Walked over to the trap and she ran to the other end. I thought, well, this ain't gonna be that hard. And as I lifted up the, the trap, she went from the other end of that 12 foot trap, she picked that gate up and she cut me open right here in the lower of the butt. I thought, oh crap. <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't know what to think. I didn't have time to think. I. The only thing I knew to do was get where she couldn't get me. I panicked and, you know, I just 
started getting up and I just thought, oh no, she's going to tear me to pieces. And the last thing I remember before I passed out was her circling that trap trying to get me. And I woke up and there was blood, you know, all in the trap. My pants were, were soaked with blood. I just uh, got in the truck, drove myself on to the hospital. If I would have fell down, uh, there's no telling. I, I don't know. She probably would have just got her, her piglets and, and gone. I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't want to know. Trapping a saw with piglets is something Mark Peterson and Bill Ramberg are hoping to avoid by scouting first with their trail cameras. They are near Arch City, Texas, trying to determine the best area in which to place their live traps to capture a hog large enough to carry the video system. Let's take this card back to our camp here and see if we've got any hogs here to play with. Oh, that is a big hog. He's coming right up to that that four foot tall tape mark. I think we should probably have Daryl put that trap down on that bait. Daryl Wines has been handling hogs since he was a boy and is the lead hog wrangler on this expedition. Now that Peterson has identified an active hog location, it is up to Wines to prepare the trap. When I heard y'all was coming to put a camera on, on the hog and uh, see what happened, this just sounded like something I needed to be part of. I'm gonna back down in there and set this trap out. With Daryl Wines' task complete, Peterson will monitor the trap from a nearby blind. They're probably going to go around and check some of the other areas for food. And when they don't find any food anywhere else, they're going to come here. He doesn't have long to wait. Just as Peterson predicted, the hogs arrive. The question is, will they enter the trap? In the southern United States, a monster is said to be roaming free and putting fear into those who come in contact with it. Hogs as big as half a ton or more, with razor-sharp tusks and a body of armor. Are they escaped animals engineered to be far bigger than Mother Nature intended? Or, more startling, are they huge wild hogs part of a growing population? Establishing the origin of these mega hogs is key. Jack Mayer is one of the country's leading experts on hogs and is able to determine by examining the animal's skull whether a hog has been born and raised in the wild or raised in captivity, then released. The differences in the skull between domestic and wild pigs are first and foremost size. Domestic pig skulls are much larger than, than wild pig skulls. Also, the, the dorsal profile of the skull, the top of the skull in domestic pigs is is very concave and this is something that relates to the the level of nutrition that that animal grew to physical maturity on. Oren Don Malloy has agreed to have Jack Mayer examine the skull of the hog he killed in 2002. If this truly is a wild pig this is this will be the largest really wild pig I've ever looked at. Mayer concurs that the features of the animal in the photo are consistent with that of a wild hog of enormous proportions. But an examination of the skull will be the determining factor. In addition to a visual examination, Mayer will take specific skull measurements which he will input into a computer software system for a definitive answer. Kevin Ryer and Tim Hicks are hoping to capture living evidence of wild mega hogs in traps they have baited with corn. We're just going to check and see if they happen to have eaten corn right up to the door and we missed them because with this big rain, the rain would have washed all the tracks away right here. As you can see, the corn is gone, uh, but if the rain washed the tracks away, this will tell us if anything's been here. There is no sign of hogs at the first location, only raccoons. Ryer and Hicks move on to the feeder trap. You want to run up to the pond that we baited up and set up, see what's going on there. We need to check that out, see if anything's happening there. All right, let's go. On the way to the trap, they notice a discouraging sign. The corn is still on the ground. They're starting to rot, finally. 
When I got acorns on the ground, it sure makes it tough catching pigs. Acorns on the ground mean a readily available food source for the hogs, which means the hogs might ignore the corn bait. Still, the area seems encouraging in other ways. This is a good spot because there is acres of swamp privet back here in a swamp area. It's almost impenetrable by a person. You, you have to literally get on your belly and crawl. That's the kind of areas that big hogs survive in, where humans can't get to them. I'm gonna set a camera up right here. Royer has designed a solar-powered trail camera that will enable him to capture images of hogs. And that's the goal, is to get a picture of a monster hog. Hicks knows that hogs become more active at night, and the approaching darkness gives him another opportunity to locate a monster. I would say your chances are better from just about dusk till, till 11, 12 o'clock at night, sometimes 2 o'clock. Kevin Ryer has also designed special LED lights that allow his video cameras to capture nighttime images with amazing clarity. As the sun sets in Texas, the hunt for a mega hog has only just begun. Two hundred miles away, Mark Peterson and Bill Ramberg's team are using a different type of video system in their search for the giants. The immediate goal, capture a hog, fit it with the video system, and trust its herding instincts to lead them to something far bigger. While Peterson and Ramberg have been scouting locations for their search, a team of scientists have been creating their one-of-a-kind video system. Come on in, guys. Hey, Gerald. Joshua Millspa, Joel Sartwell, and Jeff Barringer are wildlife researchers responsible for designing and building the video system that will be attached to the hog. The system uses a low-light camera encased in a housing made of durable PVC. The housing will protect the instruments from the elements and from the hog itself. The video assembly will be attached to a harness that will be fitted onto the hog. The system utilizes two transmitters, one to relay the live video to the researchers and a second to send a radio signal that helps track the hog should it exceed the range of the video signal. We've been doing this for the past seven years and what we've been doing is we've been developing this technology for specifically for white-tailed deer, but we have interest in applying this technology to other species. The researchers believe this is the first time anyone has mounted a video camera on a wild hog. They've discovered that differences in body structure and habitat are obstacles to overcome when designing a system for a hog versus a deer. The fact that the hog has no neck makes this very challenging. It's, it's head and body, more or less, and we've got to put a harness on it. And that makes it very challenging. We're used to a single collar. In designing the system, the team also needs to balance durability with weight limitations. There's a general rule uh, when you're doing, uh, say, radio telemetry on animals, uh, you, you want to stay less than 5% of the animal's weight. And so, you know, if you look at a hog that's going to weigh 170 pounds, you know, we're trying to limit that less than 7 pounds for the whole package. As the researchers finish assembling the video system, Daryl Wines and Mark Peterson check the trap. You got yourself a hog. You can handle him. Oh, yeah. The team decides the best area to release the hog is in a small clearing just over the hill, which entails transferring him to a trailer for the move. Once the hog is in place, the researchers meet up with Peterson, Ramberg, and Wines with the video system. Now we'll rope us a pig. Okay, open gate. Grab that other leg. Just turn around and take off walk. They're not a real limber animal. They can't bend in the middle and turn around and bite you. So if you got a hold of his tail or his hind legs, just hang on and don't turn loose and you can stay pretty safe. He's gonna bite, but just don't worry about it. This one. All right. You're right. Get around there and get your deal put together. I got him. I promise you, he cannot bite you. I don't like the fit. I want it to be a little bit tighter. 
The team makes minor modifications to ensure that the harness fits correctly while not endangering the animal. I'm thinking this is going to fit a lot better than I thought it would. It ought to stay on him for a while. Two hours? I'm thinking I want in on this bet now. <laughs> Finally, the team applies a hog attractant to the animal to increase its chances of meeting up with a large bull. We've got a good image, we've got good audio. You guys ready to let him go? Yes, sir. If the mega hogs that people are reporting exist, they may be increasing in number along with the rest of the wild hog population. We've got over two million now and growing exponentially. They, there doesn't seem to be any way to stop them here in Texas. The hog population explosion has caused crop damage in excess of $50 million per year in Texas alone. The crop damage, the damage to uh, just the ground is tremendous. They'll root up a 300 acre field in two or three nights and just completely destroy it. Their range in Texas has grown to the point now that uh, they're found in most of the counties in the state. And this is a situation that, that looks like it's only going to, to get worse with time. While attacks on humans are rare, they do occur. However, most attacks are the result of the animal being provoked or injured. Merle Smith of Clarksville, Texas, found out just how dangerous an injured animal can be. A friend of mine was hunting. He called me. He had wounded a, he called it a big hog. Uh, I went down where he was at, started tracking it, and had a good blood trail, but then it kind of got just a drop here and there. We were about to lose it, and I was bent over looking for blood, and all of a sudden, the brush started popping, and limb breaking I looked up and boy this is gonna hurt that's exactly what I thought this is gonna hurt the hog charged Smith smashing him in both legs at that time I couldn't pick up either foot I didn't fall down it didn't knock me down thank God but he just hit me and he was gone I mean it was that quick a friend of mine helped me over to a tree and I sat down and we did what we could to stop the bleeding and he went back and got a four wheeler and come down there and got me out on that. Smith was able to make it to the hospital safely where he received 67 stitches. It hit right here and ripped up this way. So his tusk came this way and it just flapped his skin up, pants, everything. The doctor said that it looked like my femoral artery just rolled out of the way of that tusk. It was that close. <laughs> Unlike the animal that attacked Merle Smith, the camera-mounted Trojan hog is not injured, but it is angry. They are a wild animal, live free all their life. When they get in captivity, their only instinct is to fight for survival. They've managed to fit the video system onto the hog, and they are preparing to release him back into the wild. The hope is that it will go into brush too thick for camera crows and perhaps get footage of a mega hog. At the moment of release, no one is quite sure what the animal will do. Turning him loose a lot of times is as dangerous as catching him because when you turn him loose, there's no defense. It's just you and that pig, and you got to turn him loose and get to safety before he can get up and get to you. You're ready? Whenever you are. We're ready to go. The signal is excellent. I'm rolling when you're ready. <laughs> you bet. Moving, is there a lot of movement or is it kind of cool? It's good. Good. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. The researchers have positioned the receiver up on a plateau in order to maintain the best possible signal. There we go. We are getting a little bit. It's a perfect image. It's just getting out of range now. The transmitter's range is rated up to a mile, but as the hog retreats into the thick underbrush, the signal breaks up. Mill Spa relies on the tracking antenna to pick up the radio signal. 
It's directly at that green building right there. We need to move the vehicle. We need to get closer. Just you don't let me forget about this. Sending the signal live from the hog to our receiver. We've got to make sure that we know and are close enough to that animal to be able to, by line of sight, receive that signal. So we've got to be tracking it all the time. If it goes down into a, a valley and, and the signal attenuates, we've got to be able to know that, find it, and then go to it. We're getting a good signal here. Doesn't look like he's moving around much either. No video. There it is, right there. Oh, it's beautiful. It's still on her. The team locates the hog, nestled in a thicket. A lot of times these pigs like this, something new, it stresses them a little bit, and they'll be a little uh, road weary or whatever. They may not want to travel much. He may have found him a place to lay down and recuperate a little bit, and it may be this afternoon, late before he gets rested up enough to travel, maybe tomorrow. But within minutes, the hog is on the move again. This time, heading into the underbrush. Hopefully, back to the herd to reveal where a mega hog could lurk. The wild hog population in the southern United States is running rampant, a problem that seems to be without a solution. But eyewitnesses report that it's not just the quantity of the animals that is a concern, but their size. This man carries the scars he says came from a giant hog's tusk. This man claims to have shot an 1,100-pound hog. However, analysis reveals it was a pen-raised specimen, less dangerous than those raised in the wild. This man says he shot a wild hog that weighed nearly 725 pounds, and his photo shows what appears to be a wild animal. This expert can determine if the hog in the picture was pen-raised or a true wild monster. As far as the presence of any giant pigs left here on the, on the planet, um, that would include only domestic pigs. Could this beast be a true wild hog weighing over 700 pounds? The skull of the animal provides the answers. This is a wild animal. You can tell by the, the, the depth of the dorsal profile. It's a very flat dorsal profile. The bone itself uh, between the sutures is, is very flat. It doesn't look inflated the way it is in a pen-raised animal. Uh, the skull itself is, is fairly narrow. It's not uh, broad the way you would get in a pen-raised animal. If you look at the incisors, the lower incisors there, they're very tightly placed together in an animal that's raised in a pen. These tend to be spread out. As far as, as whether this animal was, was raised in a pen or raised in the wild, there's no question in my mind this, this is a wild animal. However, the computer calculations tell another part of the story. In taking the measurements on this skull and comparing it to animals with, with, uh, with known weights, it just doesn't come out being 700 pounds. But Malloy stands by his original estimate. At that time, we had a, our scale went to bottomed out at 300 pounds. We'd have to have them to weigh them. And he bottomed it, bottomed it out both times, 300 pounds. So, you know, you at least got a 600 pound pig and you kind of got to guess the rest. And just from doing it so much and looking at them, you kind of, you can kind of get close. And I'm not, you know, giving you an official weight, but uh, a pig weighs somewhere around seven, seven and a quarter. While Mayer confirms that the skull is in fact from a wild hog, his findings cannot corroborate Malloy's claim. The Plaska hog remains a mystery, but Monster Quest still has two teams searching for living evidence of mega hogs in Texas. We want a monster hog. That's the thrill of going to check the trap. Tim Hicks and Kevin Ryer have focused their efforts near Quinlan, Texas. Found some real good hog signs, some wallers, fresh wallers, and lots of tracks. And uh, thought well, that would be a good place for us to, to, to maybe see a monster hog. They've had cameras in the area for nearly six weeks. 
The photos indicate they've chosen a good location in which to bait their traps. Now it's time to see what they have turned up. We didn't have any sign or any pigs in here the last two nights. Their first stop down by the pond comes up empty. All right, let's go check out another spot then, see if we can find them. Now right, we'll go check this other one out. Please, Lord. <laughs> it's a trap down by the river they've been counting on. There was hog tracks here yesterday and bunches of hog tracks. And now there's nothing. Uh-oh. Birds. That's disappointing. Yeah. We're looking for monster hogs and they're not showing up. Camera didn't catch them anyway. Hicks and Ryers attempt to capture video of a monster hog using an LED night vision video system also comes up empty. A big hog got big by knowing how to survive. Uh, knowing how to survive means staying away from humans. Because humans pose such a threat, the Peterson-Ramberg team hopes to get proof of a mega hog using a captured hog armed with a video system. The animal has disappeared into the underbrush, perhaps heading back to the herd. I think that went really well, actually. I think the placement of the camera was perfect. We had a really good view from here. The camera looked like it was sitting well. You could just see the top of the top of his head. You could see a little bit of its ear. So that that all went well. So I don't think we're that far away. We can we'll get close to it again soon. No I'm signal. A, no, I'm getting a sig. I'm getting a signal. I'm trying to get that harness off. If you can give me a general direction, I might be able to aim the antenna too. Oh my gosh! It's to our. It's over there. After tracking the hog for several miles, it's out of range again. Not getting any pings? No. Unfortunately, this time the signal is lost for good, along with the camera. The Texas terrain proved to be more of a challenge than expected in tracking the radio signal. It's not clear whether the hog was unable or unwilling to rejoin the herd. But this time, the video system did not capture any images of giant hogs. Nonetheless, the crew considers the experiment a success. Well, you always learn something. You, there's something new you will discover, and it'll help you for your next project, even if you don't get anything out of this. As for the Trojan hog, a backup safety feature built into the harness ensures the animal is not in danger. Over time, the, the thread and the canvas will just rot. Like if you leave a t-shirt out on the line for too long, the sun bleaches it and the, the weather degrades it, and pretty soon it just falls apart. Well, a portion of, our, of this harness will have that canvas embedded in it so that it will just rot and fall off. While this Monster Quest investigation did not find a mega hog, some remain convinced that giant hogs are out there. And there are giant hogs, absolutely giant hogs. Big hogs don't get big by exposing themselves to vulnerability of being captured. If we have two or three good wet years in a row, then the possibility of a hog getting that big is, uh, is really good. I don't know how they get that big, but uh, they definitely do. They do live here. You know, they have the genetics, they have the feed, they have the capability, and we let the age, you know, get them big. There's pigs that'll, that'll die of old age or nobody will ever even see because they have the cover and they don't have to be seen. While some have been proven to be pen-raised and either released or escaped, others have yet to be explained. The question remains, are these man-made monsters on the loose or is nature creating these giant beasts?